You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power, maybe a gratitude tip of the show or some gratitude nuggets, and also how do you can become a gratitude believer. And finally, one or two or three, maybe even four takeaways from my guests and from the show. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. It is downloaded on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and any other places where you get your podcasts. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I appreciate that. And also, people ask me a lot about the gratitude journals and to purchase a gratitude journal or to find out more about my gratitude coaching, speaking, group coaching, or one-on-ones, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. So let me get on with the show with my favorite part of the show, which is my guest. My guest this week is Michael James. Let me tell you a little bit about Michael. Uh, This is is a little bit of his background. Noggin Branding, which is Michael's company, is a one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. This Noggin team makes marketing fun and drive actual retail and online business sales. How do we know? Because our business has been offering a holistic approach to marketing for 10 years with happy customers in every state. We were nominated Entrepreneur of the Year in Washington State due to our clients' business results and their growth due to our, our powerful marketing strategies. Noggin provides a full foundation of ongoing support for any size business. We build and manage every... We build and manage websites, SEO, everything, social media management, and marketing services, and even packages for startups. We work with startups to large corporations and clients, and we keep delivering huge results that are pandemic proof. We build, customize, and create to drive and convert traffic to all of your platforms. And Michael is not building businesses and marketing organization organizations. He is out playing in his van and taking his cat out on adventures in his mountain bike and his drone and in cameras. I've seen many of those videos. If he is not getting lost in the mountains or on a hike, he's usually trying to get far enough away from his civilization where he can get away from the Wi-Fi signal I was just mentioning. So Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, David. It's great to be a guest and uh, I'm excited to see how the uh, podcast goes. You bet. Well, I'm excited to have people hear your story. The way I will start out every podcast is it's just the way I started is tell people how you and I met. Tell the listeners. This is great. So from my recollection, I was invited from a Joanne Brewer from Take Shape for Life, and I was going down to speak on all this noggin branding marketing stuff. And David George Brook, that gratitude guy, was speaking, I believe, was it after me or before me? Uh, I can't remember. That's a good question. Somewhere around the same time. And so at the end of the, uh, both of us after we had presented, I remember I was uh, chatting with some people about the social media stuff because there was a lot of different topics that I had covered. And David had uh, ran over and said, hey, I really want to work with you. I really want to get to know more about what you do. And so, I mean, for 10 years, I would say we've been pretty good buddies. And that gratitude guy has really scaled into a pretty big brand for you. And, uh, you know, I don't remember you having a YouTube account and I don't remember you traveling. And (laughs) so now the the lifestyle has really uh, been grateful for you, huh? Well, and that's that's, uh, exactly how I remember it. And I think I mentioned this on uh, occasionally on shows when people that I've met and have them on as a guest is this idea that you meet people and you just immediately like them. And there's other people we, we meet and we just, it's not that you don't like them. You just don't have the same connection. And, and the term that I use a lot, which I always felt with you is like-minded and you just meet like-minded people that are thinking about, you know, changing the world, making a difference, impacting lives, whatever term you want to use. And it's just fun when you meet like-minded people, because we all meet with all due respect, we all meet some knuckleheads along the way. And that just don't have, I've asked some people, you know, what's your plan for life? I really don't have one. 
I go, oh, okay, that's fine. It's all right. So you are just a young fella as uh, I've threatened to adopt you many times because I'm putting together the paperwork to add you as my third son. But because you're so young and just give the listeners a little background, maybe from college on to how you got to where you are today and kind of update yeah. them on, on those last 10 or 15 years. Yeah. So honestly, David, I, an audience here, I've I've grown up with the internet. When I first used the internet, I was using the AOL disc. You'd stick it in your machine and you'd hope to get a connection. Mm. It was extremely slow. When you'd get on the internet, you'd be like, what do I go and look at? That was our first problem. Mm -hmm. Then fast forward, computers upgraded quite a bit. Phones became a thing. College hit for me. MySpace was a thing. But Facebook had really not hit when I had started college in 2000 and what year was that? It would have been 2005, 2006, I started college. Mm -hmm. And so smartphones with color were not out yet. Smartphones were bricks and they were just like a digital screen. It was black and white pretty much. Right. And there was no applications. It was like phone call, text message, you know, you could get on the internet, but it was pretty archaic. It was brutal to go on a website because of, you know, web design was not the same as it is today. And so when college came around, David, you know, all of this internet stuff changed because then this thing came out and all these applications and Facebook and LinkedIn and all that. When I started college, Facebook was only for college kids. That's right. There was no, your parents, the, your grandparents, your, your high school buddies weren't on there. It was only college kids. So you'd go on to your school, you'd find your classes, you'd find your teacher, and then you could see who the kids were in those classes. And then you could friend them. It mm -hmm. was like a pyramid in a way. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. When that came out, I saw that and like, I went, oh, this is going to be huge. Like mm -hmm. imagine if a business got a hold of this and they actually, well, guess what? Three years later, mid-college, I was junior, junior year, the Facebook pages became a thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my gosh, you could actually run an internet marketing business off of just Facebook. Mm -hmm. But then say you package it with Twitter. And LinkedIn was a thing back then. And Pinterest was a thing. And YouTube, right? You and I were, well, that was before you and I met. But that was a big thing. It wasn't monetized to the degree it is today. But those things were emerging monsters. And I felt if you were able to package something like that and offer it as a service for someone that's looking to scale a new business, this digital service is going to be of value, whether they know it or not. I felt everyone was going to need this stuff to get more visibility for themselves, their brand, and their services, regional, national, whatever they were trying to do. So when the social media thing hit, I was like, oh my gosh, you're not just hitting someone like right down the street. You can go and find someone out of state. Let's go see what colleges are in Portland or New York or Florida or anywheres you wanted to go on Facebook, you kind of could. It was really open back then. Mm -hmm. So then as, as I got out of college, David, um, I was really into like very archaic web design. So like, you know, HTML 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so you were using Notepad. You were using like WordPress. You were custom coding typing out every single sentence to build a website. Mm -hmm. Now today you're dragging and dropping components. You know, these sites are templated. You're moving titles and boxes and, you know, e-commerce and, you know, blogs and whatever you're trying to do. It's very different. And so I kind of started seeing and actually building all of that because you, you had to, wasn't automated. And then today you know, you can build that same website in a day or a week instead of a month or a year, what it would have taken back then. Mm -hmm. So I've really grown up with computers, this, all this social, you know, all these social platforms, which there's a lot. Um, and then all this website stuff. 
But what really tied it together for me to start this new marketing agency back in 2011, when no one in our area in Washington state was really offering all three of those services, I went out while I was in college, I was in my marketing capstone classes, and I was literally calling marketing firms in Spokane and Seattle, and I was going and vetting them and finding out what services they were providing to customers, how much they were charging, and then the results that they were getting. Mm -hmm. And then I came back and started Noggin Branding as I was graduating college. So in 2011, um, I graduated in June. November 1st, 2011 is when I started Noggin Branding. And so we started with website construction and management, search engine optimization, and different uh, monthly ongoing packages, and then social media management and marketing. And again, those were recurring monthly marketing packages. Right. We did all of the advertising and then all of the analytics. So we tracked every single conversion coming off of your Facebook or your website or your e-commerce. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So as I was, you know, six months out of college, I kind of foresaw that this was going to be a, a substantial business, a substantial service that anyone would benefit from. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even, there was no class I sat in. There was no TV show or YouTube video that said, this is the future kid. You should go do this. Mm -hmm. This was fully, you know, fully self thought of. Um, I didn't see, I mean, in the United States, there was a few firms doing it, but they had large, um, and you know, large employee databases. They had a lot of different specialized service departments. I was trying to be one guy offering mm-hmm. all of those services and be good and skilled in that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people kind of laughed at me. <laughs> that and be the honest, first time people. Yeah. It's it's it was very unique. When I moved back to Bellingham where I was born and raised, everyone laughed. I went out and met probably 20 people doing websites and, you know, SEO services. But when I said, hey, I'm going to be doing all three of these in-house, I wanted to say that I'm not going to be competing with you. I'm going to be offering these services way out of bounds, like, you know, to people and organizations that have not utilized this before. Right. I kind of foresaw a new pitch and presentation. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to meet with those people to just learn what they were doing. And so, you know, they were aware And then literally, honestly, David, within three years, all of those firms now offer everything I just mentioned. Interesting. Interesting. And how did you come up with the Noggin brand name? (laughs) That was great. So, I mean, honestly, from kindergarten until I was in high school, if I ever had a problem or I ever stumbled upon something, my dad said, if you can't figure it out, use your Noggin. (laughs) (laughs) And there it was. Because Google wasn't a thing. And so like, you couldn't go like, sit on Google or your phone and ask, you know, Siri or Google and be like, what is this? How does this work? What you'd have to literally go walk or drive to a library and go ask the librarian, how does a a car work or how does a computer work or what is marketing? Right. I mean, it's so different. Like it's not even comprehensible to think back on like my high school and elementary days. It's kind of laughable. And what was your degree in, by the way? So I uh, had a minor in communications, a degree in marketing and operations management. So Mm. I stayed an extra year to complete a kind of a new offering of courses that I packaged together. So it was a marketing degree, but I'd added two extra financing and economics classes. Mm -hmm. So I kind of built my own degree out of that school. That's not, and I think too about when I'm thinking about Noggin, which is, well, today is we're in August. So you're just a couple months short of your 10 year anniversary is because it was yeah. November 1st, 2011. Yeah. But you talk about uh, websites and SEO, social media and so forth. One of the things I think the listeners might be curious about, especially being so close to it as you are, speak to maybe the changes of, you mentioned Facebook, you mentioned Pinterest, there's also Instagram, there's TikTok, there's um 
uh, uh, LinkedIn, there's some other ones. Talk about maybe the changes that some of those platforms have gone through. I mean, for instance, I hear Facebook is one example, Michael, is now it's more your grandmother's platform as opposed to Instagram is more the kids or TikTok or something. But, but speak a little bit about the changes those platforms have gone through. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's, you know, coming from MySpace to where MySpace was the only thing and then Facebook hit so hard and quick in college. It was like wildfire. Like mm -hmm. it seemed like within a week or a month, like everyone was just face down on these things. And you couldn't, you know, the summer be the, the what was it, fall uh, or yeah, uh, spring. So spring, everybody went home. These things came out. And then that Facebook thing went to an app. Mm -hmm. And then face the next, you know, after summer, everybody was buried in their phones. Right. So the whole experience of life, community, communication changed for mm -hmm. me. And like, it was really obvious when you're walking down the campus because everybody's buried in their phones now. And it's been that way since, you know, <laughs> about 15 years. So, you know, it's for me, it's it's been learning and watching these different groups and when i was in college i was friends with many different groups sports groups and study groups and math groups you know all these different friend groups that i hung out with and some people were really motivated in life some people had you know personal family you know an outlook on life that maybe wasn't as positive and so you were able to hear fears and frustrations and you know opportunity positive or negative and you really got to like interact with all these different groups mm. but the funny thing was is you got to see how they all interacted online mm. which mm -hmm. was very different than when you were in person with them right you know me on facebook drone cat van dinking mm. around and traveling mm -hmm. but really behind the scenes I'm not doing that that very often. I'm working you know, a yeah. lot. I'm constructing these very interesting opportunities. Most people just know me as I go and play and that's my life and they don't well, think and of I me. Think, Michael, that, that's a good uh, point to have you make a comment on is just take Facebook alone. I see social media and as you said, I want you to talk about, and then I know there's Snapchat, there's a few others too, but talk about how these, those have evolved. But if you just take Facebook and whether it's an older person's app or not, doesn't matter, is I'm just fascinated by, there's some good things it does, but in my humble opinion, there's some very bad things it does. There's a lot of things that the bullying and a lot of the things, the cyber mm -hmm. stalking and things like this that have happened. And uh, one of the things, and what made me think to ask you that is your comment on is because of what you just said. I see you, even though we're good friends, I see the drone, I see the cap, but that's just a very small chunk of your time. And so here people present this picture of themselves on Facebook, which frankly, a lot of people could never keep up with. I'm traveling here, I'm in Hawaii, I'm in, in New York, I'm mm -hmm. traveling around the world. And when in fact, somebody once told me that somebody takes all these pictures from one trip and then posts them every six months, like it's another trip. You know, and I yep. just thought, wow, it's there's a different side to that part of social media, isn't there? There is. And like all of these different platforms, you know, they're they've all morphed in such a big degree. Facebook started with the college kids, it then opened to high school, and then it was parents and then everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh and so when that happened, like you know, people then were looking for other outlets. And so like Pinterest and YouTube and these blogs and Twitter and so these other platforms got a big hit too. Mm -hmm. Facebook would, I would say is still the backbone to most of these, but Instagram is where, you know, I'd say the 18 to like 35 year olds kind of hang out. Mm -hmm. And then TikTok is from, you know, whoever's got a phone <clears throat> to say is 18. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Facebook is very diverse. It's, it's, you have 13 year olds and you have 90 year olds. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would say the majority of the user base is 40 plus 40 to 80 on Facebook. But, you know, if you're trying to run a business, promote a brand yourself, you professionally, you know, that's where Facebook having a LinkedIn, a Twitter, a blog, you're obviously a king on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So you're leveraging all of these different accounts to gain visibility, to gain traction. Right. But you also, your audience, they're not all on ABC and, you know, exactly. NBC and King five all night. 
Exactly. They're on all of these, you know, there's hundreds of channels. Mm -hmm. So that's why social media, when you and I originally met, I said, we don't know where your best audience is today. Right. We're going to go out and hook and find them mm -hmm. with a lot of different fishing lures and see which ones come back. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said, let's blow up the Facebook. Let's do Twitter right. and LinkedIn and grow that YouTube and, and build those foundations. In fact, actually, I was thinking if memory serves, when you and I did meet, weren't you doing a presentation on constant contact? Or email oh, marketing yeah. was that? Was that yep. I hadn't yep. mentioned that. I was working that was, with them back then. Yeah, because yeah. that was another part of your past I hadn't I hadn't really thought about. But but in terms of in one of the things too, I always like to interject somewhere in the podcast. Talk a little bit about because you've always I've always loved your attitude. How has gratitude and your attitude played an important role? I know some of your personal story, which is a little challenging compared to maybe somebody else. But how has that played a role in your overall attitude and how you look at things? Yeah, I mean, you can look at the glass half full or half empty. And I've lived a life of, I've had to do a lot of self-education and a lot of self-gratitude and self-appreciation to show up in this positive space and this supportive space. Because people really ask a lot of you, as you know, as a coach and consultant, and you're providing a mindset, a lifestyle, a way that they can construct themselves and they can show up personally, professionally, and in business. Mm -hmm. For me, when you stick out a website and you say, hey, this thing's going to grow your business. If it doesn't, who gets the phone call? It's me. Right. right. We got to fix this thing. You're costing me money. Mm -hmm. You're losing my employees. We have to furlough people. Mm -hmm. On the opposite end, you have the best performing thing that you never knew you could have. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are the transformation experts. But in that process, you have to have total gratitude for who you're working with mm -hmm. and yourself. Because if you can't show up with full gratitude, you can't do that for your customers and clients. Mm -hmm. And so for me, gratitude, spirituality, religion, what you, whatever you want to call that in your space, I'm just going to say I'm very open to anything. And for me, it's been looking at what's in my life, what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. When I look at what works, I dive in on the gratefulness. Mm -hmm. I woke up in this beautiful apartment. I got to shower. I got to hug my cat. I got to make breakfast. I have a computer. I have mm -hmm. a business. I get, I, I, you know, I'm breathing. I, I can smile if I choose. Right. Yeah. It's really how you choose to show up in a lot of aspects. Even if I got punched, you know, someone walked in the door and knocked me out right now, mm -hmm. I'd wake up and be like, what the F was that? But I'd be, I'd be like, you know, was it my thing or was it their thing or like, well, and it's so important. There's, too. there's a lot of ways to look at things. It's a so. choice and you make a choice every day. I make a choice every day. And it's just interesting how there's certain people you said it's used many times glass half full and empty, which is very true, but they're just certain people that you hang out with, or I hang out with They're just positive people, which I just, you know, the rising tide raises all boats. I just feel better. And there's certain people I notice that after you talk to them, you feel better. And then there's other people after you talk to them, you don't feel that good. And, you know, maybe it's, it's like one exercise I do the association evaluator. Maybe it's time to reevaluate that association and the person mm -hmm. that you don't feel as good. Maybe you should limit your, your time with them a little bit too. But, but one of the things I want to get to is, is the last 10 years uh, from the time that I met you to now have been just fantastic for somebody who's starting in his early mid twenties to now early mid thirties. What, so if there's somebody listening out there that's around that age of 18, 20, 22, what in seeing the success you've had in this last decade, what would you tell them or maybe one or two or three tips from Michael? Here's some things you could focus on if you want to do a route that's similar to mine. Yeah, it's, it's really finding something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I really love computers. I really love the idea of marketing. I really love the idea of communicating that to customers or potential customers. And so whatever it is, whether you like video games or you want to be a YouTuber or you want to be the biggest coach and consultant in the United States, or you want to be the best bus driver in your community, community, it doesn't matter. It's whatever you set your intentions to. And if you create a roadmap, a foundation, step one through 10, if I want to start 
the bus driving academy or if I want to be a dentist or I want to be a marketing consultant, what do those steps look like to do that? Right. Luckily, you don't have to go to the library. You can sit on your phone and Google and have everything in the palm of your hands in minutes or hours if you want. You get to like look into so many different things in minutes or hours if you want. If I wanted to change industries and be a dentist tomorrow, I could do so because it's literally all online. Yeah. I could call a few people and ask, but really it's finding what you're passionate about, what you want to do. And if you see yourself doing that for hopefully more than one, five and 10 years. Yeah, exactly. I love the one, five. If, if, if not have that pivot point in two years, five years yeah. or 10 years to exactly. the other idea or the next idea. Right. And I do like the one, five, and 10, because one is the obvious immediate one, five is kind of mid-range, and 10, a little bit longer, but still something to shoot for. Maybe it's somebody buying a house or starting a business or something might take some cash. But one of the mm -hmm. things, and I'll bring this up every once in a while, it's a little statement of three lines that I really like is how to make your dreams come true. And you talk about finding something you're passionate about. And this says a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. And then a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. And then a plan with action taken makes your dream come true. And so it really is, is figuring out what it is that you wanted to become passionate about, setting your intention, you said, and the roadmap is kind of like putting that into steps and then put, taking those steps into an action plan and then taking action. And maybe mm -hmm. there's a hundred steps or a hundred pieces of action. So you do 10 steps, 10 pieces of action a week for 10 weeks. And at the end of 10 weeks, there you are. So, so, so yeah. important. But I think one thing I, I love to ask this to my guests and especially somebody like you too, because I'm always curious about their answer is that Michael James, very motivated, talented, energetic, great attitude, et cetera, et cetera. Where do you think your motivation came from? It's, it's again, it's that passion of what I really enjoy. I really like to work on computers. I really love the idea of marketing. And for that, it gets me out of bed in the morning. Mm. It makes me hop on the phone. It makes me do podcasts. It makes me go out in the community and ask questions. How can I help you? What does your business need today? Mm -hmm. Is there something that you might need in a year? Mm -hmm. and, and so I ask a lot of questions, whether it comes back to me today, tomorrow, or a year, it really doesn't matter mm -hmm. because you're out there and you're creating these opportunities. If you don't, and you just stay in your little box, no one's ever going to know about you. Yeah. If you don't have a Facebook, if you don't have a website, if you don't have these things, it's really hard. Yeah. And those are free. They're online. You don't have to go face to face if you don't want. That's the great thing of the internet. Right. And it's interesting. Think of your think of your position. You could have clients all over the United States. Oh, now and you yeah. can just do Zoom. Oh, unbelievable! And, you know, and then as a result of the pandemic, certainly Zoom. I've gotten so used to Zoom now. Although I had a day yesterday with five or six Zoom calls, and of course, the new term "zoomed out." was uh, yeah. kind of appropriate for me. I'm like, wow, but there's something about one guy was in Australia. Another one, gal was in Minnesota. Another one was in Florida. And the fact that you're side by side, looks like we could be having coffee in Bellingham, you know, together, you and me, it's just so amazing and stuff. But, but no, I totally. think finding what you like to, and the, the word passionate came up quite a bit. And that's why I'm always with guests on the podcast that go from their twenties or thirties, like you up to 60s, 70s, 80s. I, I always like to take the younger folks such as yourself and think, well, what's, what can I, you have them tell the other younger folks, because you and I have talked about some friends of yours in the past and I won't mention any names, but I know my younger son has some friends and I always come up with the same comment. What are they doing now? Uh, they're pretty much playing video games and smoking dope. And, and I thought, wow, so I'm not here to judge them. That's not my role, but I am mm -hmm. curious about where the motivation comes from. And when you find something like you mentioned the computers and you got a mind for that, and then you kept expanding it. And then I want to do this and I want to do that. And I want to do SEO and I want to do social media and website design and all those kinds of things. It's just, I did a video the other day, if it's a have to or a get to, and if you have a have to, that's too bad, but see if you can make it into a get to. And even I was thinking about some editing and things I have to do this afternoon, but I get to do it. And so it's a choice mm -hmm. that I make. And so nobody's telling me I want that editing done by four o'clock. So yeah. it's really neat because basically you're, as far as I know, your entire life, you've been an entrepreneur. I mean, it's, it's really never been the, the so-called traditional job that you did somewhere else. Did you? I've tapped, I've done like two or three little random jobs, uh, two were forced from my parents. And then the other one was 
because I got to test a really unique business opportunity at this radio group. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, it was really hard to turn down, but the, you know, the motivation for me is it's, it comes from enjoyment. It comes from passion of interacting with people like yourself and think of the nine years since you and I met, Mm -hmm. I love to see the results. Yeah. I am a results driven person and I love to see like what David does on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Yeah. Yeah. You're pumping out content, man. Your, your, your website, your social, like you have grown a substantial business. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But it's those positive people that we've kept in our lives, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, some you and I have talked about. We've unfriended, uh, you know, they have, mm-hmm. we've moved on because we're trying to do some bigger things in our lives. Right. And that's okay. You, some, you have to have those conversations in life. Yeah. And that's how you can then clear up your universe so you can attract the right clients the right friends that you're going to be doing some podcasts with and grow businesses and make an impact for people. So interesting. You're, I I go to great lengths, or at least I try to, to, to not judge and, Oh, listen to the the gratitude guy. He's, he's bad mouthing this. It's not that at all. It's just that you're known by the company you keep. And, you know, Mm -hmm. you've heard all the expressions, one bad apple and, and you want to play with a better tennis player to become a better tennis player and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I even thought of something the other day I hadn't thought about for years and you go back to your Bellingham days. And I think probably all of us played a little pool in, in college, maybe high school and college. And I haven't played much since then, but I always remember when they have all the quarters on the the pool table, who's got the next game. And once you were out, you may not play for an hour and a half. So as you wanted to try to win. So if there was somebody that you were playing that was not very good, you kind of hit the shot and, you know, you wouldn't really care about it. That's uh, eight ball or not eight, seven ball corner pocket, something like that. And yet if there's somebody who's really good, man, when you got your chance, you are measuring that shot because you know, if you miss it, he may run the table. You're not playing for another hour and a half. You know, and it's all done. Bye bye. Get out of here. See you so tomorrow. <laughs> it's the same thing when you would really bear down because you're playing with a better pool player, and so yeah. you're going to take your game up to to match it as opposed to just being sloppy or something. So, but I I think there's many people that have you know different goals in life, and it's okay. One of my modules is this: find yourself, find your passion, find your talent, rather find your passion, find your purpose. I think the relationship you have with yourself is the most important relationship you have. And I think Mm -hmm. number two, if you find your talent, as I've said in my talks, if you're five foot one, 125 pounds, you're probably not going to be an NFL quarterback, but maybe think about being a jockey, find out what your passion, you're very passionate about computer and computer science, the whole computer world. And I think the three of those combined will take you to your purpose. There is a mm-hmm. reason you now you've seen for the last 10 years, in my opinion, your purpose for being here, the people you've met, the travels you've done. I know you've done a lot of traveling and so forth and all the things. I mean, I love watching your drone stuff and this, the different things you put together. And so that's why I think it's, it's really neat to what are the tips that Michael could from a mid thirties range, looking back to a twenties range, give somebody and this passion and setting the intentions roadmap and figuring out the steps. But another thing I'd like you to address, because you said this too, I think this is equally important, and that's the ability to pivot. So speak Mm -hmm. about that, because I know you've done a couple of pivots along the way, and speak about how that's impacted you. Uh, I'll just use the one big one that you're familiar with. So Mm -hmm. David, four years ago, November 20th, 2016, I got this, so it's five years, but almost five, uh, I got this idea, and I get ideas. I have an idea journal over here and it's, it's packed. It's got a lot of future noggin ideas. Situation arises on November 20th at three in the morning. And I, I get up and I'm like, what in the world is that? I've never heard seen. If that's a possible, that could be pretty game changing. That could be like implanted in the United States or any country really, really easily. And basically the visual that landed in my head was this entire mapping system for this financial technology company, a FinTech company, a referral system, a new type of banking slash CRM that I had never seen or touched myself. And I had, you know, with Noggin for the previous years up until 2016, there's a lot of CRMs Kick, uh, not Kickstarter, but um, uh, Salesforce and Zoho. And, you know, there's thousands, 10, there's 10,000 of these things. And I've gotten to play with them. But when this map laid out, I was like, oh my gosh, if I could find someone 
to put this together, we've got a system that would be game changing. And basically I stopped noggin <laughs> from 2016. And I have been on this quest to find teams to build out this banking and this very unique CRM system. And so I went through three previous teams to get to this fourth team. Now solid number is the supporting team software and backing to run this entire concept. So what we've done is we've built a unique customer relationship management tool. So it's like Salesforce where you have leads, you have a calendar system, you have a website that's connected and you're tracking all of your booked appointments or your sales for your books, your classes, your consulting opportunities, however you've structured that. And then on the back end, we have this organization so you can run your website, all of your Google Maps reviews, all of your social media channels, and then all of your QuickBooks or accounting data in one dashboard. And then the idea is, as you're running your business on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you're looking at this dashboard and say that you need access to capital. You need that vendor to pay their bill before it's, you know, say it's three months down the road from say a government agency for your speaking. Maybe the bill comes in three months when their payrolls, right? We have all of these different financial tools as you're scaling your business. So if you ever come to a situation Hopefully, you wouldn't have to run around your city to 10 different financial institutions to get the help you need. Nice. In this one CRM is all of the financial tools, resources, institutions you would ever hopefully need to run your business. And I think, and two, we're going to have to wrap up in a couple of minutes, but what a great way to wrap up the conversation. Tell the listeners what, how they can get access to that, because that's kind of like saving for the best mm -hmm. nugget for the last, because I'm thinking so much about your history as Noggin, but when we talk about financial technology, tell the listeners how they can access that and get a hold of you and, or the CRM and, and maybe have mm -hmm. access to it. Yeah. If you just go to solidnumber.com and then slash Michael James, that is where you will find all of my information and all the sign up information. Solid number, S O L I D number.com. Yep. Yeah. And yep. then slash Michael James. Yep. I, will and I can send in. you the link so we could put that in the description. Yes, please send me the link and I'll put it in the show notes too. But that's solidnumber.com slash Michael James. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because that's, uh, you and I have chatted about that before. And I've kind of have, I need a refresher because I think that's really, really powerful. So well, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to wrap up. And, and uh, before I do, I always have, uh, well, actually, let me talk about a couple of takeaways that I took from today that I always like to make clear to people. One you just mentioned uh, recently was uh, idea journal. I think that's mm -hmm. a really cool thing. And, and however you journal, I have a gratitude journal, that gratitude guys, daily gratitude journal. I sell a lot of them and it's uh, something that people have bought at my speeches for all the attendees and so forth. But uh, any kind of a journal written or on your phone, a pad of paper, or whatever in a notebook is really important. So an idea journal, uh, find what you're passionate about. I think sometimes that's brought up a number of times but you can't bring it up too many times. Um, it's just so important because it doesn't feel like work and that's, it's a get to versus a have to and mm -hmm. uh, setting your intentions and then putting those attentions. I'm a big person with, I always take all my notes on yellow pieces of paper and I, I make them and I type them in here later, but just however you do it, put together a roadmap. I've been a pilot for a lot of years. You would never fly somewhere without filing a flight plan. I mean, there's a route you're going to go to get from A to B and it's just part of the deal and then breaking yeah. it down into steps and so forth. And then, the pivoting, because as you said, back on uh, four or five years ago, you pivoted and Noggin is still part of your deal, but the financial technique, uh, tech, uh, excuse me, financial technology and the solid number thing has become a big deal too. So last mm -hmm. question I have for you as I wrap up every podcast is at the ripe old age of the mid thirties, um, what do you know today that you would have liked to have known at 18 that would have helped you if you could pick one thing? Boy. I'll, uh, I'll keep it simple, but it's, it's really knowing what you want and just moving towards it without any thought of repercussion or um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, judgment. Mm. Just there's no fear of judgment. You just move like a hot knife through butter. Mm. Whatever you want to do, 
move on it. Don't think anything, just do it. Put a plan and do it. I really like that knowing what you want and moving towards it with no judgment and basically mm -hmm. just do it. There's a, uh, I mentioned it occasionally, there's the five regrets of the dying. And I, I'll bring this up when somebody mentioned something that these were people all interviewed in their nineties. And one of the big ones is, is I wish I had taken more chances. And in this case, knowing what you want and moving towards it with no judgment, just do it. Another one mm -hmm. was of the five is I wish I'd lived a life more true to myself than what others had for me. Hence, your parents wanted you to be a doctor and engineer, and then you weren't always oh, so disappointed. Uh, but yep. if you know what you want and then move towards it. So that is, that is excellent. Well, mm -hmm. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for everybody. You bet. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. A couple of last reminders. As I mentioned earlier, my podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk radio network and is available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear, and I always appreciate that. To purchase a gratitude journal and to find out more about my gratitude speaking or coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. A lot of people like to get my Monday morning minute. I send out a 60-second video every Monday morning to a lot of people. And if you're interested in getting that, go to your, te your text button and type in 22828. That's five digits, 22828. And in the message box, type in gratitude guy, and that'll get you connected with my Monday morning minute. And then also an exclusive for my podcast listeners, I'm offering my three month proprietary gratitude coaching program with an extra month of coaching free of charge. So just email me and let me know you heard about that through the podcast. And Finally, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate all you listeners and viewers. And until next time, I'm David George Brook, that gratitude guy. And remember, be grateful and never quit. So long. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brook, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us. And you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.